Hey, all right, it is that time. This is me, John Park, and welcome to John Park's workshop. That was an almost smooth transition, but not quite from the audio. Uh, welcome, we have a great show in store for you today. I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it. Uh, the topic today is gonna be light painting. Uh, and I know you probably saw a preview of it. Uh, you may have seen a preview. I don't want to be presumptuous. You may have seen a preview of it yesterday on Show and Tell. Uh, and I posted a little teaser video. Um, and I know that we have done quite a few different light painting projects and uh, persistence of vision projects. They're actually slightly different. Um, and uh, in, in Adafruit, in the... Uh, learn guides over the years, but this is a, uh, well, it's another one for one thing, and this is one that is really simple to make. Uh, we've had some that were moderately complex, some that had a lot of custom builds, some that were incredibly uh, detailed as far as the uh, density and size of images, some of the Raspberry Pi based stuff with dot stars that Phil Burgess has made are mind-blowing. So uh, if you like, like light painting, go check out uh, the Learn Guide, adafruit.com, and check out the light paintings because we got a bunch of different uh, ones uh, for every different type of light painter out there. So today I've got a new spin on it that I think you're going to like. Um, and uh, I should give credit to Phil B because Phil wrote the software for this one and uh, it's running on a hollow wing, but uh, I've actually also got it running on a Circuit Playground Express. So I'm gonna show how to do both of those in the guide, which will be out tomorrow. Uh, so let's check in on the chat. How's everyone doing over in YouTube? Uh, good, we got a couple people, uh, someone from Algeria. Hi, Tracker C from Algeria, welcome. John K from Chicago, Matambale, nice to see you. Uh, and, uh, hey, we've got all kinds of great people in the Discord chat, too, and those are our two main chats. So go check out either Discord chat or uh, the YouTube chat uh, to uh, see what people are up to. So the conversation continues there, but uh, what I'm going to jump to now is our coupon code. So did you know that Adafruit Industries sells a whole bunch of great electronics stuff in its store? It's true, we do. Uh, all kinds of open source hardware and accessories, uh, electronics, uh, 
bedded systems, microcontrollers, motors, servos, lots and lots of LEDs, uh, tools to put things together, books, all kinds of great stuff. So head on over to the Adafruit store. If you're watching this show, you're probably interested in this stuff. I'm guessing you've been there before. But today you can get 10% off in the store with the coupon code PAINTSTICK. PAINTSTICK. That'll get you 10% off, and that's good on all products other than software, subscriptions, and gift certificates. Uh, mm. Delicious iced coffee. I see in the chat that C. Grover, uh, in Discord chat, says, coupon code received, order placed. I love that. Are there people who kind of build up a cart and wait for the show for the coupon code? I hope so. That makes me feel good. Very cool. And, uh, you know, we... Uh, we provide all kinds of great content here at Adafruit, and one of the things that keeps us going, keeps the lights on, and lets us make this great content is your orders in the store. It's all good stuff, so go check it out. Uh, and now this brings us to the product of the week. So the product of the week this week is this lovely little NeoPixel strip that has alligator clips on the end. This is called NeoPixel LED strip with alligator clips. Uh, and we actually have a couple of uh, variations on this. So the one that I'm gonna use, uh, I have two different ones I'm using in the project today, but the one that I use on the Circuit Playground Express is this one that you see right here. It's a 60 LED per meter, so that's the density of it. Uh, and it's a half a meter long strip. This one here, this is a full meter, I think. Let me check the package this one came in. What's this guy's story? 30, is this 30 per meter? Let me check against him. Yeah, okay, so this is a less dense one. So this is, this is the 30 pixel per meter strip. Uh, so we sell both of those. I think this is a half a meter. Um, but the cool thing for these uh, is that they terminate in a set of alligator clips, so they're really easy to connect to projects such as Circuit Playground Express, uh, Circuit Playground Classic, Microbit. Um, there's probably some others I'm not even remembering that also have the alligator clip style breakouts. Um, let me go into my drawer of Circuit Playgrounds. So you can see we've got the little um, pins broken out to these pads and the alligator clips fit really nicely into those. So um, very convenient, especially if you are doing classes uh, or workshops and you don't want to be fiddling around with wires into breadboards uh, or other types of connectors. So this one makes it very easy to just hook onto things. Uh, so go check it out. Here's another picture of it. And oh, let me hide the uh, website there. So there's the lovely NeoPixel strip in action. Um, wow, Mr. Certainly says he's got two or three wish lists ready to go at any one point. Very cool. Uh, yeah, paint stick, that's the coupon code. You could go buy one of these for a discount. What does this thing cost? This is $12.50, so you'll get 10% off of that uh, if you buy it with that coupon code, and that's good until midnight. So, let's see, I'm gonna do a little bit of prep here before I say those magic words and transport us into a wonderful place of learning with block-based coding, uh, I think you all know what's coming. What else could it be other than the Make Code Minute? That's right, it's the Make Code Minute. Can you believe it? So I have a couple things to pop up for you to see. We've got, I'm gonna adjust this camera, a little demo here that I put together and some Make Code. So for today's Make Code Minute, what we're gonna look at is using the sound sensor on the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. Uh, so you can see here in my, uh, I'm using Chrome here. Uh, in my Chrome session, I've got Make Code open, it's browser based. And in order to use the little microphone, this little microphone right here, uh, built right onto the Circuit Playground Express, I'm gonna reset that one so it starts up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is 
use this sound level block. So if we look at input, and I'm making sounds so that thing is moving, uh, you'll see we have a value here called sound level, and that's the raw values coming off of the, the microphone, the sound sensor that's on the board. Uh, so what I'm doing is I wanted to turn sound levels into positions of this servo, kind of like a meter. So what I'm doing is on the startup, I am initializing my servo at 180 degrees. That just rotates the, the servo arm to where I want it. And then what I do is I have this if statement that checks the sound level. So just dropping that block in there is all we need to check the sound level. And I'm checking to see that the sound level is greater than three. So I just wanted it to not always be wiggling when it was mostly quiet. So I tuned that just by trial and error. And I got this number that works pretty well for uh, when there's no sound, this uh, servo is moving. But when the sound level gets higher than three, I'm using this uh, servo right pin, A1, that's where it's plugged in, to, and then here's my favorite, this map function again. I'm mapping the sound level value, the raw value, uh, and I'm taking a slice of it, the zero to 50, and then I'm mapping that from 180 degrees to zero degrees on the servo. So uh, you can see here, if I snap my fingers, that's gonna jump up to one. Now, sorry, you might want to lower your speakers because I'm going to yell at the thing. Ah! 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 All right, we got up to two, and I don't know why I screamed like Pee Wee Herman, but I did. Uh, so that is how you use the sound sensor on the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. All right. Well, thank you for, uh, for that. And now I'm wondering, did uh, I've got to check the chat. We've got some people who've been timing me on those, which is really helpful. I need to just start a stopwatch. Uh, Mr. Certainly said my, my one from last week was like a minute 35, which is great. I'm trying to keep them under two. Uh, so let's see. Um, the, yeah, there are lots of meters. I like meters. And using servos as meters is kind of fun. Um, it's a little more straightforward than a stepper. Uh, I actually don't think we have stepper code for Circuit Playground Express on its own in make code, but I think we do inside of the uh, Cricut, if you use the, the Cricut extensions. Um, all right, so that brings us to the project of the week. So the project of the week is the... I'm going to hide this. Goodbye, little thing. There you go. Uh, the project of the week this week is the uh, Halloween light paintbrush. So let me play a little video for you first. Okay, so that's my light paintbrush teaser in action. So you see the, the device there, which we're going to get a closer look at, uh, and you see some of the results. Now, I thought it would be interesting to uh, share some of the images I've taken. Actually, this is from a photo shoot I did uh, last night with a friend of mine. Can you still hear me? Oh, good. I was worried that was going to cut out the audio, and it did not. That's very helpful. We'll, we'll see if it does as I start changing the images. Um, so my friend Joel Reed, who's a photographer, uh, came out with me and did some long exposure photography of some different patterns on the uh, light paint stick. So let's, uh, let's bring up some of these. Okay, so here's an example. All right, I'm gonna pop, pop my audio back on after I switch those. We'll see if that keeps happening. I think it will. Uh, so here's a really good example. I've got um, a 30 pixel pattern uh, that is not changing. So this is a static pattern. Uh, so there's 30 neopixels that are lit up and they're uh, going from, I think I have two red, two blue, three red, three blue, and so on. I can show you that pattern in a minute. Um, and all I did was, uh, what Joel did actually was he set up his camera on a, a fairly um, dark uh, set of exposure settings and uh, a uh, 
the, the shutter and the, the uh, exposure were set so that we would end up with this blurred image uh, where the light is um, because the uh, bulb or the shutter is being held open for a number of seconds and he's actually just using a little manual trigger. Um, so what I do is I take the uh, device, he says go, he squeezes the trigger, I sweep the pattern and stop and then in some cases I stood still uh, long enough for some of the ambient light to light me up and then this, this photo was taken in raw format and then processed to bring up the exposure level so you can actually see me doing it. Um, they typically come out darker than that uh, with a higher sort of contrast. Um, so that's one technique. Another technique that I'll show you is to use a flash on the subject. So uh, bear with me while I find an example of that. Okay, so here you can see um, I moved the um, light, uh, light paint stick around in a pattern and then at the end I held still and Joel triggered a flash. He actually carried his camera flash that's sort of portable and just manually triggered it himself to light me up um, even though we don't see the background very much there, which is a, a kind of an interesting technique. So you can do a lot of things with light painting um, beyond this project. You could use this project to light up objects uh, and, and provide sort of sculptural uh, contoured lighting, painting with light, which is a, a really interesting topic. Um, so let's, let me see here if I can pull up some other different examples. So this is a nice one. Uh, what's happening here is that instead of having a continuous pattern, uh, which is what that rainbow and that uh, red and blue one look like, this is actually a uh, bitmap that is playing one slice uh, of, of the rastered image, one sort of column of the image per time slice. And I have a little dial on the, on the gizmo that I can use to change uh, how quickly it runs through whatever the full width of the image. This one I think is roughly 30 pixels high by 30 pixels wide for one pumpkin. And I did it three times during the one exposure. So uh, here I'll touch the capacitive touchpad on the wand, move in a, trying to move in a fairly uh, constant rate and it just lights up and down and that gets captured and then it did it in three different positions. Um, so let's see, let me show some other images and then I'll, I'll do a little bit more of an explanation of how these are put together and show you some stuff in Photoshop that I think is um, interesting and helpful to see. So uh, let's see, not that. Here's another nice one of just moving the, um, the wand around, so pretending to be a sword, uh, a swordsman, uh, and then the pop flash at the end. And, oh, so these are really cool. So Phil B had made this uh, helix image and so I set this to uh, the continuously looping mode. So I triggered it and even though it's not a, uh, a constant image, it's actually running through a certain width of pixels, uh, it loops perfectly. So it was designed uh, in, in the bitmap image to uh, wrap from the left hand side to the right hand side perfectly. Uh, and then I just walked with it at a certain rate around this lamp post. Uh, and in this case, I, I kind of did a J pattern, walked off into the left. Uh, here's one where I kind of boomeranged back, starting at the camera and then coming back. And so you can see we get sort of a depth to the image as it recedes, uh, it gets smaller, which is pretty wild. Uh, and I also took this for a spin on the swings. And these are kind of cool because you can see, uh, depending on the uh, rate at which I tell the image to play back on the wand, we get a different compression of the helix pattern, which is a really uh, a good one to look at this sort of thing on. So I'm basically moving at the same rate on the swings. So I 
go, he takes the exposure, I turn it off, I return, and we're done. So then I just, on the next picture you're gonna see, I changed the dial to uh, run through the image a little faster. And you can see it's running through it much more quickly even though my motion in space is the same. Uh, and here's one where it's longer. And here you can see it's stretching out the time frame of that same set of pixels. Uh, all right, let's see, what else? Oh, here's, here's a cool one. You can do logos. So here's our, here's our good friends at DigiKey. I got their logo on there uh, floating above my workbench. Let's see, where am I? You can see it in its full glory. And most of these took a bit of experimentation with um, exposure settings and uh, how fast I was moving, how, how wide I can go. So it's really helpful to do this with someone else. But I've also done it with remote timers on my own camera. I took a bunch of photos that way. Uh, there's also some iPhone apps that you can use uh, that won't get as sharp uh, a, a, an image typically as uh, these, although I haven't tried them all. But there's a, a pretty good one I can recommend called Pablo named after Pablo Picasso, who famously did uh, experiment with light paintings. Um, and that one's also cool because it actually does both your final image and a little GIF or a looping video of a couple seconds of the frames being built on. So they store all the data and then they break it out per frame and they, they uh, sort of concatenate it. Uh, all right, let's see. I'll show you a couple more and then we'll look at the gizmo itself. Okay, so if the Beastie Boys uh, ever need an album cover with me on it, I feel like this somehow could work into, or maybe not a cover, but, you know, the little liner notes kind of photos these throw in there. Uh, my, my skate punk green circle thing. And bats! So this is one image that I made. I'll show you this one in a second. Um, Average shutter speed used for these images, these are um, typically f anywhere from six seconds, four to six seconds, up through like 20 seconds. Um, fairly low ISO. Yeah, that was sort of cyberpunk, Yannin. Um, let's see, what else? All right, I think that's it. Yeah, that's good. That, that gives us a, an idea of that. So um, now I want to show you what it looks like to put these together in Photoshop. Um, so here is an Adafruit logo. And this is uh, about 30 by... 100. Okay, so that's sort of the extent that we're doing now. And uh, Phil B and Lady Ada were talking about uh, doing some optimization of the code so we could get wider images. But uh, these worked. These this constraint of 30 by 100 worked well for the stuff I did. Um, so when we uh, think about a single column of pixels that's being um, displayed on every time step, the uh, you can think of it almost like a TV set, a, a, a CRT, a cathode ray tube television set, um, turned on its side. So a CRT would rasterize vertically a line at a time moving from top to bottom. And it actually did every odd line and then every even line so it didn't feel like it was uh, slow down at the bottom. So that's an interlaced rasterization of pixels that go horizontally. So this is a vertical... Uh, version of that and if you I have a couple ways you can look at this uh, here I'm gonna put this mask on and imagine the NeoPixels are just this colored strip and as I move the image that's that Adafruit logo moving sideways and so that's what our NeoPixels are doing let me see if I can Zoom in a little closer, oh, no, too, too far. And let me move that over for you. Good? Yeah, all right. Um, and if I actually make this mask slightly see-through, you can see a little better what's happening. So that's the image that's stored in 
uh, we store it as a BMP, which is a, a rasterized bitmap file. We store that on the Halo Wing or the Circuit Playground Express. Um, so it's sitting there in memory, but it's just displaying uh, that one strip over time. And depending on how fast I move this, uh, it'll change how quickly the logo will appear in its full. So if you move at a constant rate, like I showed with the Helix example, if you run through those pixels very quickly or those, those columns very quickly, you'll get a squished image. And if you make it slow, you'll get an overly, excuse me, overly wide image. So it's a, a bit of a um, trial and error to get honed in on the right uh, speed. You actually, what I found last night, we were doing a photo shoot, you start to get a feel for looking at the image uh, speed changing on your NeoPixel strip and knowing, okay, if it's a 30 by 30 and it's moving that fast, I'm going to be able to move at like a two second speed and draw the thing in the air at three second speed. Um, okay, so, the, oh, here's a different example of, let me move this back over here. Come back. There we go. Uh, so here's my, I'm going to zoom out this time. So here's my image and here's an example of, um, you can see it a little better. You can see the image, right? So I'm just scanning my one lit column back and forth. So that's what a scan looks like. And if we rotate this thing, um, This is how a TV set works. So, or used to work. They're progressive scan now, but all right. So top to bottom, except it's every even and every odd. But if you get that moving fast enough, eventually it looks like that. Um, so I hope that's helpful in conceptualizing it. And um, the uh, I'll, do I have them on here easily accessible? There's a question. I might only have them on the boards in a different computer. Uh, Halloween, light painter, art. Yes, I do. Okay, so here, for example, that's the bat's image. That's how big it is in real life. Uh, this is it blown up, so 30 by 100. Um, and let's see. Uh, some of those I did, uh, this one was kind of interesting. So if you look at those uh, sword images, it's actually not a constant streak. The, you'll see that the colors are shifting from sort of the inside of an arc to the outside of an arc, and that's because this was the, the, pro, the uh, image I was playing back. It was looping through this thing, and it, it matches up or hooks up on the ends. Um, so that was my little rainbow bump thing. Uh, here's my pumpkin. And uh, I'll put all these into the guide, so you'll be able to, uh, if you build one of these, you'll be able to use this art as a starting point and then make your own. Um, okay, so let's see. We're running low on time, so I want to switch over to the workbench and show you how I built it. Uh, let's switch over to this camera and, oh, okay. Actually, this is kind of cool. What I, what I want to see is, can you uh, see this image playback on camera, because I've set this camera to be very blurry. So I'm going to turn this one on. This one's a looping skull. And so you should be able to see um, a skull going by. I'm going to turn on my chat. Let me know if you are. Um, and kind of the neat thing is, is that these, um, yeah, let me know in the chat if you're seeing that image. You are, I think. Yeah, Mr. Certainly Drew a Skull, thank you. Yeah, so, um, and that, I'm doing that on an arc, but I, I, if I pull it really fast, you can see that's, that's your TV set action. Just pull it down, and you should get an image on there for a moment. If I can get a fairly constant rate. And then if I change my, um, I'll show you here, it might be a little blurry. This is my little potentiometer, so I'm going to set this to be really slow. And... Now it should be a very wide skull, so we'll only get a little piece of him. So this is going to be a much bigger skull there. And if I compress this time frame down a lot, a lot, you'll get a very skinny skull, even though I'm moving at the same speed. Okay, so um, now I'm going to fix this camera so you can actually see through it without it being too blurry. 
Let's see. I say I am. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh no, have I? <laughs> what did I change? I only used these two dials. All right, hold on. Oh, nothing is changing because I think, yeah, this is the pain of having that camera way up there so I can't see the, I'm gonna stand up in an Apple box and try to fix it. There we go, okay. I think, That's better. That's a little sharper now. Okay. Sorry about that. This is live TV. Um, so, I'll pull this out of here. Here is what um, this is made of. We have, oh, let me switch over to that camera. We have our Halo Wing, which has the TFT on there to do fun eyeball and other graphics. Uh, but otherwise, this is an M0 Express Feather. Uh, and I have plugged into it see back here, um, if it'll focus, I have the potentiometer plugged into the sensor input, I have a LiPo battery, and then I've got this NeoPixel strip. Uh, and then the way I built this was I actually started with a yardstick. So um, these are $2 at my hardware store and they're nice thick uh, yardsticks. I decided, you know what, that's really nice and easy to work with. I uh, actually thought it was really um, quite nice after a lifetime of measuring twice and cutting once to not really have to measure at all. So I took these onto the bandsaw and shortened them. So here's a, uh, I cut it down to like 28 and a half inches just because it felt like the right size of handle and a little easier to, to wield. So I just took that onto the bandsaw and lopped off that. Now I have a little seven and a half inch ruler. Uh, and then I sanded this down a little bit for a handle. And you can see here's my one with the Circuit Playground Express on it. So I've got this one set up for uh, a, one of those rainbow perspective patterns. Um, I don't think you'll see that trick anymore. Um, and then I used zip ties in both cases to zip tie my NeoPixel strip to the yard stick, now the paint stick. Uh, this one I spray painted. And this is a, a, not an endorsed, or this is an endorsement I'm not paid to or anything, but I love this uh, brand of spray paint. This uh, Montana gold is awesome. And I just got some sort of flat black, I think they call it stealth, or gray rather, um, they call it stealth. So I put a few coats of that on there to just to make it look like it wasn't made from a yardstick. You don't really need it. It doesn't impact the, the light paintings that much, uh, honestly, the color of that. Um, and yeah, the rest is all just zip ties. Everything's zip tied onto there, including our, uh, our board. Um, and then at this point, when I want to uh, change out the pattern, I'm, I've got all the bitmaps loaded onto here. We actually have eight megabytes of RAM, uh, flash RAM on this board. And I forget what we have. Do we have a meg on the Circuit Playground Express? Someone might be able to tell me in the chat. Um, by loading all those bitmaps onto there. Right now, the software doesn't have a selector, which certainly would be a cool addition. Right now, I'm just going into the circuit Python code and commenting out the lines uh, of all the bitmaps except for the one I wanna show. Um, so full code will be up on the learn guide. Uh, and I hope you have enjoyed the uh, Halloween light paint stick. Um, and let's see, I'm just going to head over and hang out in the chat a little bit. I'll also remind you that we have this, uh, in case you're inspired to go buy some parts and build one of these, uh, we have this coupon code that you can use in the store, 10% off if you use paint stick. Um, and other than that, yeah, so, uh, some, I'll take a few questions. Uh, we've, we're just a couple minutes over, so I think that's okay. Um, the uh, taking these photos, you can definitely do it with a, a, a camera phone, an iPhone. Um, thanks, John Case Shaftstyle says C, uh, Circuit Playground Express has two megs of flash. Um, but if you want to take nice, sharp ones, you want to definitely not be holding your camera. So if you can do a, a um, long exposure, you need 
alternate software. The, the built-in camera on iPhone at least doesn't have a long exposure. Um, it'll do time lapses, but those are individual frames over time. Uh, but if you want to hold that exposure, you've got to find an app that'll do that for you. Hopefully one that has a countdown timer uh, so you can hit it and then you're not touching it. It's staying perfectly still. Uh, a fairly dark environment. You've lowered the brightness on the exposure setting. Then go do all your light painting, get out of the photo and stop the thing. Or you can do all your light painting and then use a flashlight on your face if you want to appear or pop a flash if you have an external flash. Um, a tripod. Uh, Mr. Certainly mentioned in Discord chat, tripod is a excellent uh, kind of a vital thing to have if you're if you're going to do this with like a I used a micro four thirds camera for a bunch of mine um, which I'll also show in the in the uh, the guide so this is a little um, Olympus uh, pen I, I love this camera it's a great still camera has a nice lens on it and it has manual enough settings you can you can uh, control your your exposures um, this one I also got an app, so this is Wi-Fi on it. It's a fairly modern camera, so it's got Wi-Fi, and there's an app for my phone so I can remotely trigger it. So uh, before I got Joel to come and help me, once again, I want to thank Joel Reed for helping with photography. Um, when I was shooting these myself, I would frame and focus. Actually, focus doesn't matter. Everything's going to be sharp with the kind of um, f-stops you're using. Get out in front of the camera, get ready to do the thing, hit the button on the iPhone remote app and it, you can see it count down and then open the bulb, turn it off. Um, <laughs> Seagrover asks if they have meter sticks. I, the only meter stick I have is a, a, like a vintage one from a Chevy dealership. For some reason, it's a local like a Los Angeles Chevy dealer. It's got inches on one side and, and metric on the other. Uh, these are all, uh, I don't know why it's a wasted opportunity for them. These are all imperial uh, inches on these ones that I got at the Do It Center. Uh, yeah, so tripod's important for that, and, uh, well, thank you. If anyone has other questions, I'll be hanging around on the chat, and, uh, thanks for stopping by John Park's workshop for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park, and I will see you next week.